thank you very much for the kind introduction and uh, welcome to my talk, uh, which is uh, dealing with optical coherence tomography and uh, in the oral cavity. Okay, so, well, why should we, um, oh, is it working? No? Oh, maybe it's the wrong one. Yeah, why should we uh, worry about our oral cavity and uh, why should we uh, talk about the oral cavity? Well, the reason for that is quite simple because each of us here in this room can be affected by oral heart and uh, soft tissue lesions every day. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes they have a larger impact on our life quality. So starting with the heart, uh, tissue lesions, carriers and periodontal disease are uh, quite widespread diseases in humans. So for example, in Germany, only 1% of the adults are free of carriers. And uh, other than expected, it's not only a lack combined with a lack of oral hygiene, it's also linked to a weakened and suppressed immune system, uh, the presence of carriogenous bacteria and plaque, and of course, sufficient time in order to take any effect. And uh, yeah, coming to the soft tissue, um, unfortunately, oral dysplasia and malignancies are becoming more and more occurring and increasingly occurring, but not only in older people, also in young people. And uh, yeah, the reason for that is, not, is that uh, today oral cancer is not only a disease um, which is combined with the chewing tobacco, drinking alcohol and smoking, so like an old man disease. And uh, it could be also linked to HPV, which is a quite a common uh, sexually transmitted virus. So that's, uh, those are the reasons why it is uh, helpful to see your dentist each year. And uh, this is the expert for your oral cavity, for your heart and soft tissue lesions. But unfortunately, if you are talking to even experienced physicians in your clinic, um, they would say that uh, especially early stage diagnosis is um, sometimes hard and imprecise. And the reason for that is, yeah, the lack of high resolution um, diagnosis modalities and how about imaging modalities? Um, are there any available which can be uh, support the conventional diagnosis methods um, which are available in clinical routine dentistry, for example? So like the conventional um, radiography, which is quite established for carous lesion detection, or the digital volume tomography and the digital fiber optics trans elimination. All of those are limited to submillimeter resolution, so probably they can be supported. And with regard to the dysplasia, um, repeated biopsies is often needed, and uh, subsequent histopathology, histopathology, histopathology um, yeah, to have a reliable diagnosis um, if the lesion is cancerous or not. And uh, yeah, how about optical methods um, to support this? So is there any effective non-invasive diagnosis modality mm, like spectroscopy or confocal imaging um, have shown quite good results uh, because they can uh, provide molecular contrast. Um, but unfortunately, they are hard to apply in vivo. So they are limited to a small field of view and to a low penetration depth. And that's why we're thinking about uh, optical coherence tomography. So OCT is uh, well established in uh, dental care uh, right now over the last 10 years. So it's uh, usual or useful to use, um, useful um, to detect uh, carriers, surface closed carriers, and uh, of course to follow up um, after treatment, follow up monitoring after treatment. And with regard to dysplasia, well, it's difficult to classify, of course. So there's no molecular, molecular contrast available with OCT, and uh, we have only the mo uh, morphological information. But yeah, we should give them maybe a chance. So what is OCT? OCT is a low coherent uh, interferometric imaging modality, which is using um, typically um, near infrared light. This light is guided to the um, fiber coupled spectrometer here in this case, as you see probably here, there. And uh, after it is recombined, it can also um, detect it spatially by this kind of an, uh, spectrometer, for example, or it can be also detected um, temporarily just by a detector. So um, if you have a, a swept light source uh, used. So those interference fringe uh, signals have uh, the content that uh, of of your um, depth structures, so point-wise depth stru structures, so it's a scanning, um, scanning modality. And at the end, if you have um, some nice pre-processing um, performed, um, you get those depth um, profiles, and if you have more than one 2D and 3D imaging is allowed. 
Okay, so um, by this morphological um, imaging, it's quite established right now, and uh, OCT is also extended with functional um, imaging like polarization sensitive imaging and Doppler OCT for um, yeah, blood flow um, imaging. And I think those extensions are quite useful for the oral cavity as well. So we have blood vessels within the connective tissue, within the um, lamina propria, and uh, we have also collagen fibers within this connective tissue. And of course, the dental structure, the hard dental structures, is highly biofringent as well. We need definitely an endoscopic um, OCT adaption. And uh, yeah, we should also think about high resolution OCT, which is. Um, quite useful for ophthalmological um, imaging, but yeah, well, why not for uh, epithelial imaging? It's good, so starting with the endoscopic OCT, um, this is our uh, latest um, development of an endoscopic scanning device, and the secret of, them is, of it is just uh, that we are using a commercial endoscope from the um, company stores in Germany. We have adapted the, um, yeah, optics in front and have mounted a camera on it and you are using a uh, LCD screen for um, offline image guidance, video guidance during the um, investigation. And uh, those are the results which we have or yeah, results which we have achieved right now on healthy tissue st uh, dental structure. Um, here you can see the healthy animal and the dentine below as well as the juncture in between. It's also very good to um, image the transition part between uh, the gingiva and the animal or uh, else, of course, uh, follow-up monitoring of composite restoration is quite useful. Um, early mineralization defect um, can be also imaged as uh, early stage diagnosis, so white spot and hard. Uh, brown spot uh, lesions, and of course, some um, morphological changes as well. So coming to the oral soft tissue, um, yeah, the soft palate, so the anterior part of um, your oral cavity is, uh, has quite a, a, a bad access. So with the endoscope, we can reach those palatoclossal arc and can see that, uh, yeah, where's the mouse? The um, epithelium is the uh, homogeneously scattering um, layer on top of it, and below you see the um, nice collagen fibers, which are um, aligned um, here um, for the soft palate example towards the um, or hard palate. Then here from the palatal colossal arc, it's not that dense, and yeah, the um, structure is a bit different towards the buccal mucosa. Okay, high resolution OCT, yeah, high resolution OCT. Um, OCT is not only performing uh, quite well in the near infrared wavelength range, it can also be quite useful if you uh, take account of the um, visceral range. And then we have a, a spectrometer based OCT system on our lab, which is, uh, has a high resolution, actual resolution of about one micron in uh, tissue. And what you can see here is quite impressive because uh, we can resolve highly the epithelia and the epithelial reed ridges in combination with those connective tissue papillae which are, are coming from uh, down, from below. And uh, I think I've never seen that before, so OCT is uh, quite useful for probably early epithelial um, alteration. So we should uh, combine this with an endoscope and uh, we'll see what is the value of it. Okay, polarization sensitive OCT. Yeah, as I mentioned before, the animal structure is quite uh, biofringent. And uh, yeah, besides this reflectivity information, which is quite good, of course, because you can see here some cracks or some, some gaps in between the composite restoration and the animal structure, or here the early um, demineralization defect. But you have uh, um, additional information if you have a look on the uh, polarization. Um, and with this, on this kind here, the red parts are the, the light, which has no polarization content anymore, so it's depolarized, so it's not coming from biofringent structures. And this is quite a good marker for, um, yeah, altered oral tissue, dental heart tissue. We have um, evaluated this um, by using um, carriers, um, lesioned uh, tooth or teeth as well, so the white spot and the brown spot as image. And uh, to my opinion, I mean, um, you can see that there's something ongoing or something um, wrong within those uh, structures here uh, with the morphological information, but with this depolarization contrast, you can definitely um, segment more um, reliable where the carriers, um, where the carriers is, carriers lesion is, so the limits of the, the borders of the carriers lesion. 
Yeah, um, last but not least, uh, we have also imaged uh, or used polarization sensitive OCT for um, imaging the lining oral mucosa here. Um, so it's the inner side of the lower lip because it's also not adapted with the endoscope right now. It's a system which is using a center wavelength of 1300 nanometer. And uh, we are thinking uh, this is quite good right now, just the morphological information. But if you have a look on the polarization contrast, there is some biofringent content within the connective tissue, and this is due to the aligned collagen fiber. And I think this is quite um, nice here that you can see those um, aligned collagen fibers as like a marker for um, healthy oral tissue. And if there is something uh, early ongoing in towards your connective tissue, towards the basement membrane, uh, and growing down there, uh, it should be and have an influence on this uh, collagen fiber alignment. Yeah, last but not least, we have also imaged the dorsal side of the tongue. And uh, as everybody probably knows, there are a lot of papillae on the dorsal side. And uh, those images are quite good. The en face view shows that um, the circular stru structures of the papillae. But what is um, really impressive is that there is some biofringin content already in the epithelial layer. And this was quite surprising for me. And uh, just uh, talking to dentists, um, they have the um, they have the, the solution for it, so it's just the collagen fibers which are um, forming those papillae, and we think those circular structures probably here in this um, in this on fast view are a quite good marker for healthy oral tongue, maybe in the future. Okay, at the end, the clinical question is uh, essential for um, for the decision which kind of system has to go to the clinic, and uh, yeah, we need a of course, um, good, consistent studies and reliable results. And then it's much better to evaluate what is the value of OCT for um, yeah, more accurate um, oral screening in the future. We will see. OK, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.